you talked about the turnovers kind of you attributed part of the reason for the turnovers being the spacing obviously with davis out that's going to hurt the spacing some uh you played garrison a lot more minutes yesterday are are those things all related and is is garrison someone whose role potentially could increase because of the circumstances you guys are in well i mean we needed some shooting and right now he's one of our best shooters. I don't think his role is going to increase much. Uh, we're still trying to we're trying to find uh, somebody to step up in that in that spot. He's right now he's earned earned it with um, his work, his effort, and he's still a young player and is still developing. He. He made he made a couple of shots and, and he took a took a couple of tough ones and defensively he still needs to continue to understand uh, coverages and but he, I don't know if he's it's going to get more minutes I mean just yesterday it was just uh, we needed we needed uh, some spacers and with Brad and Russell uh, being able to do that attack and our bigs did a great job. But we need guys to space the floor. You know, we haven't shot the ball well. And uh, last night we didn't shoot the ball well from three either. Ava. Um, Scott, you mentioned last night that uh, a couple of the bench guys just weren't locked into the game plan as much as you would have liked them to be. Uh, looking back over the film now, what part, uh, what breakdowns, I guess, did you see specifically? You mentioned on the defensive end, I believe, last night was. Uh, kind of the first step that you noticed? Well, we have to, um, there are certain guys on their team that if they put us in a bad position, we got to get them on the free throw line. And their bigs were, you know, eight for eight. And I'm assuming those eights were, eight, eight, eight buckets were not outside the paint. So we got to one, we got to make them earn it with two free throws uh, with their percentages. That would save you eight points, roughly. Um, and then we got some shooters that we have to uh, chase and, and trail, and, and we didn't. We shot the gap, and we got burned a couple of. And then miscommunication. Or, you know, we got guys that are still developing, still learning, but it's 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 the, it's the mistakes that we can't afford to make against a high-level offensive team that has great playmakers that, that can find these mistakes instantly and they 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 bury you with the three and you know, we we did that and we need everybody you know we're we're down down some guys and we played a probably this is probably the toughest stretch like I said before the game starting from Philadelphia you said okay this after that game you say okay this this might be the best team then you go to Milwaukee and there's like dang this might be the best and you keep going to Utah, and then now you're at Brooklyn last night without KD and Blake just coming back. That team is, I don't know, that's going to be a, a nightmare for a team to try to beat that team in, in seven games. I mean, it's obviously possible, but but back back to us, we can't we can afford to, to make those same mistakes, um, and those are game plan mistakes, and you know, we have to be better than that. And um, you mentioned to us recently, we kind of ask you about threes all the time. And you say, you know, you guys haven't shot the ball super well all season. It's kind of not who you are. How on offense then um, with the league, the way it is, that's so skewed to three points today, how do you guys kind of make up the difference for that? Obviously you can do it on the defensive end by just playing super good defense, but where's kind of the, the niche that you guys can, can find in that case? Well, we're trying to, we're trying to find it on, on the fly. We we want to shoot threes. We want to make them. We want to space the floor. But you also gotta you gotta go with what we have right now. We have one of the best three point shooters, Allen. And then we got Thomas Bryant, who is on his way to you know taking five to seven any given game, and at forty percent clip. So those guys, they're out. Um, but the way you can counter it, the way we have been countering it, we've been trying to get to the paint. And get to the paint allows you layups, allows you dunks, allows you drop offs, allows you offensive rebounds with our bigs, and it allows uh, free throw attempts. And those are the ways that we have to counter it. And it's not just because the the analytics say to shoot a three 
doesn't make doesn't mean that you're just going to have guys out there that not comfortable shooting threes shoot them uh, we have to give ourselves a chance and last night last night we made uh we made some errors um but our effort was outstanding like i said we played against a very high level offense and a veteran team that really knows how to, to play and have been together so but we have to be able to generate points uh with our attacks uh, we were pretty good when we touched the paint. We want to keep doing that. Chase. Scott, I'm, I'm just curious. Um, How do you generally approach uh, watching the NCAA tournament? Do you get a chance to see any of it while you're coaching? Or is that something that, like, you know, maybe in the summer you wait to revisit those games as you evaluate players? No, I mean, I very rarely watch them. I mean, I watch the highlights and I know who, you know, who wins and who doesn't. But last night, you know, just watching Philadelphia, the Knicks, that was what a great game. It seemed like Philly won, you know, five times that game and they lost five times and they ended up, in, ended up winning it. It just, it was a great game. Everybody was making big plays and big stops. I don't, I don't spend a lot of time watching it. I know when we, once we get, through the season and we pinpoint some guys um, in the draft process, that's when you would spend more time, you know, watching the players. Now that Irvine, Irvine didn't make it, there's really no reason to watch. Chris Miller. Hey, Scotty, historically, what are your communications like with the general managers you've worked with over the years when the trade deadline gets to, you know, the 72 hour mark or the week leading up to it or maybe a week leading up to it? How much do you kind of just interact with them and tell them what you'd like to see in terms of improvement or buying or selling? Yeah, I mean, in the past, I've had, you know, I've had I, I know my role, I know my job. My job is to focus on the players that we have now and and get them better and and that's that's from the past and to the current situation. Tommy and I talk a lot and we know if we have opportunities to get our team better, we got to explore it. Uh, we got uh, we have to. We got to keep keep moving the, the the team forward. And I know he knows we have some areas that we would love to shore up, and this is a time where teams you know make moves or or buyouts and we got we got a couple of spots that are we're looking for for good minutes out of them and we got guys that are playing them um but it's still tommy and i are always in communication we're always trying to figure out we're not just going to just stand pat if, if something comes to us and, and he will share with me and I will give him my input, but he makes he makes those decisions with his staff, and I, he's done a great job. I mean, we we knew what we were getting into. We, we got a, a, some young players that need to experience, and when you have some high level um, players on your team, it's 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 a fine line. You have to find the sweet spot. I think we're doing a, a fairly good job, and we'd like to have some more wins. With a lot of the things that's happened to us, we can't control, but. I feel like with Denny and 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 Rui, we got a good opportunity for those guys to get better. And Rui has stepped up and you know, he's playing some good basketball. Denny still has to earn his minutes and and play his minutes better. And our job is to get him better. But Tommy's going to look and and he does. He's the hardest working guy I've been around. So and he's connected with everybody. He's always on the phone and and talking and trying to figure out how we can improve our team. But if there's something out there, we're definitely going to look. Uh, just to follow up on, I'm watching Nicholas Claxton play last night, young rim protector, guy that kind of just sat on the bench and then they trade a guy like Jared Allen and then he kind of moves up. Is it hard to find young rim protection? And and how did how do you stash somebody like that and then all of a sudden he comes out and have a game like that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like every you got to be patient. The guy's worked hard and put himself in the position, and it's 
not that I'm taking anything away from what he does, but when you have really good players and he's athletic and he protects the rim and he rolls and he catches lobs and has good hands, when you have really good players, they're going to draw a lot of attention. And but he's good. He's a talent. He's a talented young man. They Sean Marsh knows what he's doing, and you know you think that you know that Allen is a, another talented player. That I'm not real. I mean, I'm not. I don't know the ins and outs of of the 2019s. I know what we need to do and what we need to improve on. And we're always, my job is to improve within. And then if we have opportunities to get our team better, Tommy is obviously believes in improving our team. We're not just going to stand and, and watch. If something comes up, we're going to ex definitely explore it. All right, that's all the time we got for coach today. Appreciate it, guys. Um, sorry, can I ask a question, uh, Coach? This is Zach. I just want to ask about Rui and how he just played in his 82nd career game yesterday. Sorry to cut in like this, but now with the full NBA season under his belt, will you have different expectations for him going forward? Or no, I, I think he's still like you have to get better every day, and it's it, you can't skip days. You're he's a young developing player that needs to keep improving. He's just finished up his 82nd game or so, and and. It's still, I mean, he's young. He's having a, he's, he's solid, but he still has areas that he needs to work on. And, and he will, he's a worker and we, we, he can't, he can't, you know, he has a lot of basketball in him. And this is just one year for, you know, many, many more years to come. Hey Brad, you guys are um, playing the Knicks, obviously. Um, RJ Barrett, um, do you know him very well? And I, I know he's also a Drew Handling guy and, and just, I guess generally, what what have you thought about the step that he's made this year? Uh, I know him a little bit, yeah. Uh, in the summers, we we may cross paths, work out every now and then, either together or, or just right after each other. Uh, and he's he's taken a step uh, in his game, you know, improved his shooting. He was always really a good slasher, attacker, mid range player, uh, finishing really good at the rim. Uh, but I think he's just being more confident. Uh, his outside shot and his, his ability to be able to put the ball on the floor. Uh, you know, and I think he's in a great system with Tibbs, you know, who's just going to motivate his guys to play hard. Uh, you know, so it's, it's definitely it's definitely unique to be able to see his growth, for sure. And he's a nice size guy uh, for his position, too. So helps. Chris Miller. Hey, Brad, we're like 72 hours away, I guess, from the trade deadline. Um, as a veteran of this league nine years in, what does these kind of days leading up to the trade deadline, what's it like? Um, obviously, your name's never been in one of those, but you know I have teammates. And what does this team need, man, you think, as you guys are getting ready to take on the Knicks? And uh, would you like to see a move being made? Uh, that's tough. I mean, because – you always sit in the position you're in and it's easy to, you know, say you need this, that, and the third, uh, but it's not always the easiest thing to do, uh, you know, or pull off. So I can sit here and say we need a lot, you know. Uh, I can sit here and say we, we're, we're really good with what we have, you know, and it's just a matter of us being more consistent. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's Tommy's job to do. And uh, whenever he brings something, where something comes to the table, he always, you know, asks me or incorporates me. So I'm appreciative of, of that on that standpoint. Um, but answer your question as a vet. It's uh, it's always weird during this time because you never know what'll happen. You know, stuff is usually quiet until literally like the last day or hours leading up into the deadline. Uh, you know, so you just kind of, you kind of just sit and wait, man. You you just really honestly never know what'll happen. I've seen guys traded a halftime of a game before, so you know it's. It's a dog eat dog world, you know, come around this time of the year. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if we'll if we'll do anything, but you know, Shep is I'm sure Shep has been on the phones. Uh and you know, whatever he, he can come up with in the next seventy two, you know, we'll we'll address it. Zach. Hey, uh, Brad, um, Rui just played in his 82nd career game yesterday, and I think you eclipsed that mark in the middle of your second season also, but what part of the game do you remember slowing down most for you in your second season? 
Mm, you're asking me about seven years ago. Uh, mm, uh, that's tough. I don't. It's really hard to recall, but it's uh, for me, it was what helped me was just embracing the journey I was on. You know, for me, it was. I wasn't more or less worried about playing versus just being on the floor because I was hurt. Um, and so that was that was my biggest focus was removing that label of being injury prone and can't stay on the floor, can't play a full season, you know, off of my name. And uh, and even in the second year, actually, same same thing happened again. So uh, I think his path was a little bit different than mine. I think I was more or less focus in, you know, how to stay healthy, how can I get my body back right, you know, on top of obviously being confident in, you know, who I was as a player and, uh, you know, and trusting my vets and Coach Witt at the time, you know, and, and kind of throwing me into a role of, you know, of leadership and uh, being one of the key focuses on offense leading up until our playoff year that year. Thank you. Ava. Hey Brad, um, I asked Scott the same thing, but um, when your guys' threes aren't falling the way they haven't been the past couple of games, what do you feel like on offense? Not not necessarily just leaning on the defense, but what on offense do you feel like are the best strengths that you can turn to to kind of make up the difference there? Like when you guys are on, even if the threes aren't falling, what works best, I guess? Uh, getting, on, getting on transition, getting easy points, uh, attacking the basket. You know, those are two things. But, you know, you can't get on transition if we're taking the ball out. I didn't stop. Uh, and obviously being aggressive on, on offense, understanding, you know, the foul situation, foul count, um, trying to get to the free throw line. But, you know, me, I don't, I probably need to shoot more threes than anything. Uh, but just taking what the defense give us, being confident in the shots we get. I mean, even if we aren't making them, we're still going to shoot them. I mean, that's just, that's just, Probably common sense basketball, especially if we're open. We're open. We're going to shoot. Uh, but yeah, nonetheless, I mean, if it's not falling, you just got to attack, get out in transition, and try to get to the line as much as possible. You guys talked about transition defense in particular a lot last week. How do you feel like it's been in the past uh, couple of games? Uh, it's been probably terrible because I've been turning the damn ball over. So uh, it's never good. If, uh, you know, we're not forcing the other team to take the ball out, you know. And, you know, we're just kind of handing them the ball or I have four charges in the game, whatever the case may be. It's never good for, for our defense to be able to get back and get set. So it's uh, being smarter and uh, we just have to make sure we get a shot up every time so we give our, our defense an opportunity. Neil. Hey, Brad, you know, you kind of just touched on it. I don't think that you've ever had three charges in a game, let alone in the first half. Not necessarily for those in particular, but when there's a call that you might feel, you know, live, okay, I don't, really don't think that that was the right call. Do you ever go to Scott and say, hey, can we get this challenge? Can we get this looked at? Scott typically has not been a coach to use his challenge too much this season. Uh, yeah, I do every now and then. But, I mean, this is, I understand a lot of times it's early in the game. He doesn't want to use it early or, um, you know, our, our video guys review it or try to review it rather quickly and let us know, you know, if they agree with the call or not. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, sometimes I wish we do, but I mean, can't go back and change it, change the call anyway. So I mean, it's, it's can't stop the game and like, you know, make a big fuss out of it. You know, either we challenge it or we don't. If, you know, if we don't, we move on. So. And it looked like Brooklyn was throwing kind of some of those box and wedding sets at you yesterday. I know a year or two ago, it seemed like that was the first time it kind of really picked up where teams are doing that to you. Have you learned anything in the past year or two about, okay, maybe I try to do this wrinkle or that wrinkle to try and combat that? Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of, it's a couple of things that, you know, I, I can do differently and be better at. And it's a lot that I've learned. Uh, a lot of teams are starting to do that now. And I, I knew they were going to do that in the first play. I think like two or three guys jumped out as I was running, did an Irish cut. And we got an easy layup with one of our bigs. But 
I, once I seen, it, I was like, okay, this is this is gonna be one of these type of games. Uh, so I mean, I, I respect it, but you know, it's just utilizing our, my bigs more. Uh, you know, taking advantage how they're playing me. A lot of times they're forcing me one way, so uh, you know, not fighting that. You know, being able to come out on the backside, you know, constantly moving, setting screens, being decoys, uh, bringing the ball up. You know, kind of eliminates that too. So. Uh, it's a lot of stuff that you know we, we we're trying to do to you know keep teams from doing that. All right, last question to Chase. Hey, Brad. You guys have now played forty-one games, which in a normal season would be half of the year. Um, how would you just kind of encapsulate how this equivalent to half a season has gone? For this team, I mean, can it compare to any other year? Is it, or, or how would you compare it to anything else you've experienced? Uh, I mean, you probably can't compare it just off the strength of COVID alone, you know, and it's being a weird year, shorter games. Uh, so, yeah, in a sense, I, I won't even compare it to another year. It's, it's a year of its own. Uh, it's definitely different, unique, different protocols, rules. And all of that, so it's definitely, it's definitely a different year. Uh, in terms of where we are, if you, you know, if it was a whole year, uh, we obviously aren't where we want to be or where we'd like to be. Um, it is promising to see that you know we're still right there. We we've dropped some games, uh, but you know we're still you know fighting range of, of making a run. So uh, that's the benefit. But it's crazy. I think we only got like twenty six games after the break. Or after uh, after the deadline, so it's it's weird. It's weird. It's going by fast for sure. Uh, but you know, like I said, we're not where we are. We're, we're too inconsistent. You know, we have to be better in that staff part moving forward if we want to want to have a chance at it. Hey, Rui. Uh, Scott was telling us, you know, that one game where you didn't have any rebounds. You know. It seems like there's just been a big shift in your play. You know, you've been more aggressive. Was there anything that was said or, you know, told or demonstrated to you that you think maybe kind of clicked on the switch or how would you kind of assess your recent uh, increase in level of play? Um, I feel like I've been telling you guys um, a lot, but um, I'm not like only the guy score the ball or like just play defense or play, you know, um, getting the rebound. You know, I can do a lot of stuff, you know, not only score, scoring the ball, like just play defense. I can do like the rebound and stuff. So I feel like for me to like help this team to win the games, you know, I can, I can rebound the ball at least like, you know, 10 rebounds a game. Those are easy stuff. Um, to help the team to win, and then also the defense, we been aggressive. Um, Girls, girl, those like the best players, and then the offense, we gotta be aggressive. You know, those kind of things. I just you know start thinking more these past couple of games. I just gotta try to make a basically I'm making the goals like you know myself and say like oh you know this 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 this, and that's how I've been playing. And then yeah, the rebounds are for sure the ones like you know. Um, you get more motivated, like, you know, playing defense and play offense and more being aggressive. Chase. Hey, Rui, you've, um, you've been shooting over 40% from three going back uh, 14 games. Um, do you think that's, or just the improvement in general from three is sustainable? And, and just where's your level of confidence from three point range right now? Yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been practicing a lot of threes, especially from off season. Um, I was in LA with the Corey. Um, we we practiced a lot of threes, and then we we started the season, and then you know uh, we at first I feel like at the beginning of the season I couldn't really um, get the rhythm, you know, since because uh, I had a like bad injury, like whatever eye injury, and then I got Corona and stuff. So that's why I couldn't really get in the rhythm. But now, like, I've been playing, like, you know, since the January, and then I kind of get in the rhythm, in a good rhythm. So that's why I think it's helping me to making all those threes. Zach? 
really you uh, debuted your kimono style uh, cherry blossom fit last night in the shoes. You want to just talk a little bit about um, why it's important to you and, you know, what you're, are you launching, you know, your own fashion or, or what do you, what are your goals kind of with all this? Oh yeah. So first of all, um, so kimono is the one I get, uh, the stuff from my brand, uh, about the brand names Black Samurai. Um, that brand is uh, for, I made it because, you know, there's a lot of, I'm a half black and half Japanese. And then there's a lot of, a lot of kids like that in Japan, you know, and then I thought it's a, it's a good thing to have a company, not a company, but like a brand to represent myself and in my country and then help those kids um, you know, anyways, you know, um, you know, then be given the confidence, like the, I'm, I can be the guy, you know, the inspira inspiration, those guys, those kids. So, and I started those kind of stuff and making, you know, the kimono was, I thought it was a cool idea to make one, um, to like, you know, launch it. And, you know, that's like a traditional Japanese clothes. So, and it makes in the culture, the DC culture, the Char Charlie Blossom, they say like a long time ago, the Tokyo given like, 3,000 Charlie Blossom or something in the DC. So I think it was cool to like mix the cultures and like, you know, and make a kimono. And yeah, that was the first first brand, first thing I wanted, I wanted to sell for my brand. And then my shoes is just Jordan. I talked to them, um, you know, the April, March, April is the, the season of the Charlie Blossom. So, and then they, yeah, that's why they, we made the shoes. Chris Miller. Rory, much respect on the kimono and the shoes, man. Uh, that, that, that was pretty cool to see yesterday. Uh, I want to ask you, how have you gotten better playing with Russell Westbrook? Like, what did you learn uh, the first couple of days kind of being around him and now being his teammate for half a season going, okay, he does this. I know I can do this to make he and I uh, a better combination on the floor. You know, um, I feel like it's not easy to like play with the, um, any guys for me, you know, because I was just like, you know, um, and especially me, like, you know, growing up in Japan and in high school, junior high school, and even in the college, you know, I was always the guy, you know, I'm, I was the first option. And now I'm in here, in the NBA, you know, we have all these superstars playing with the Brad, uh, Ross, you know, great players. Um, it's just the, for me, it's hard to like adjust, you know, on my play style. Um, but you know, there's a lot of ways to like, you know, um, score the ball, get the rebounds, getting the rebounds, play defense, there's a lot of ways to like help these teams win, you know. And I watch a lot of film, you know, especially, um, like about my, like, I would like the past couple games with the coaches and, you know, it's just, you know, I feel like it's more like uh, the time, you know, we now we play what, 40 games, I guess. Yeah, 40 games and, you know, it's, you know, it's been like, you know, and I, I played 40 games with it. I mean, I, I played Brad last year too, but, you know, but this year, uh, the Russ got in and joined this team. And, then, you know, it's just, the, you know, the first, like the beginning of the season, we were struggling, but now we start kind of getting, you know, I start kind of getting understand, like, you know, uh, his play style. And then where he going, like, you know, do these kind of, like, you know, like I kind of start getting it. So that's why it's kind of helping me to like, you know, and especially like, oh, the cut, cut to the basket or like a go to rebound um, or spacing out. Um, especially me and him, I, I think we have a good connection, uh, especially in transition. So those are good stuff. And he always talks to me too about like those kind of stuff. So it's actually helping.